episode 39. The man in rags was now advancing on Ogden, knife in one hand, wand in the other. No, look, Ogden began, but too late. There was a... And Ogden was on the ground, clutching his nose, while a nasty yellowish goo squirted from between his fingers. Morphine, said a loud voice. An elderly man had come hurrying out of the cottage, banging the door behind him so that the dead snake swung pathetically. This man was shorter than the first, and oddly proportioned. His shoulders were very broad, and his arms overlong, which, with his bright brown eyes, short scrubby hair, and wrinkled face, gave him the look of a powerful, aged monkey. He came to a halt beside the man with the knife, who was now cackling with laughter at the side of Ogden on the ground. Ministry, is it? said the older man, looking down at Ogden. "'said Ogden angrily, dabbing his face. "'And you, I take it, are Mr. Gaunt?' "'Shrot,' said Gaunt. "'Got you in the face, did he?' "'Yes, he did,' snapped Ogden. "'Should have made your presence known, shouldn't you?' "'said Gaunt aggressively. "'This is private property. "'Can't just walk in here and not expect my son to defend himself.' "'Defend himself against what, man?' said Ogden, "'clambering back to his feet.' Busy bodies, intruders, muggles and filth. Ogden pointed his wand at his own nose, which was still issuing large amounts of what looked like yellow pus, and the flow stopped at once. Mr. Gaunt spoke out of the corner of his mouth to Morphin. Get in the house, go down to. This time, ready for it, Harry recognized Parcel Tongue. Even while he could understand what was being said, he distinguished the weird hissing noise that was all Ogden could hear. Morphin seemed to be on the point of disagreeing, but when his father cast him a threatening look, he changed his mind, lumbering away to the cottage with an odd rolling gait and slamming the front door behind him so that the snake swung sadly again. It's your son I'm here to see, Mr. Gaunt said Ogden, as he mopped the last of the pus from the front of his coat. That was Morphin, wasn't it? Oh, it was Morphin, said the old man indifferently. Are you pure blood? he asked, suddenly aggressive. That's neither here nor there, said Ogden coldly, and Harry felt his respect for Ogden rise. Apparently, Gaunt felt rather differently. He squinted into Ogden's face and muttered in what was clearly supposed to be an offensive tone. Now I come to think about it, I've seen noses like yours down in the village. I don't doubt it if your son's been let loose on them, said Ogden. Perhaps we could continue this discussion inside. Inside? Yes, Mr. Gaunt. I've already told you I'm here about Morphin. We sent an owl. I've no use for owls, said Gaunt. I don't open letters. Well, then you can hardly complain that you get no warning of visitors, said Ogden tartly. I am here following a serious breach of wizarding law, which occurred here in the early hours of this morning. All right, all right, all right, bellowed Gaunt. Come in the bleeding house then, and much good it'll do you. The house seemed to contain three tiny rooms. Two doors led off the main room, which served as kitchen and living room combined. Morphin was sitting in a filthy armchair beside the smoking fire, twisting a live adder between his thick fingers and crooning softly at it in parcel tongue. Hissy, hissy, little snakey slither on the floor. You'll be good to Morphin or he'll nail you to the door. There was a scuffling noise in the corner beside the open window, and Harry realized there was somebody else in the room. A girl, whose ragged gray dress was the exact color of the dirty stone wall behind her. 
She was standing beside a steaming pot on a grimy black stove and was fiddling around with the shelf of squalid-looking pots and pans above it. Her hair was lank and dull, and she had a plain, pale, rather heavy face. Her eyes, like her brother's, stared in opposite directions. She looked a little cleaner than the two men, but... Harry thought he had never seen a more defeated-looking person. "'My daughter, my rope, eh? said Gaunt grudgingly, as Ogden looked inquiringly toward her. "'Good morning,' said Ogden. She did not answer, but, with a frightened glance at her father, turned her back on the room and continued shifting the pots on the shelf behind her. "'Well, Mr. Gaunt,' said Ogden. To get straight to the point, we have reason to believe that your son, Morphin, performed magic in front of a muggle late last night. There was a deafening clang. <coughs> Merope had dropped one of the pots. Pick it up! Gaunt bellowed at her. Let's it! Grub on the floor like some filthy muggle! What's your wand for, you useless sack of muck? Mr. Gaunt, please! said Ogden in a shocked voice, as Merope, who had already picked up the pot, flushed blotchily scarlet, lost her grip on the pot again, <coughs> drew her wand shakily from her pocket, pointed it at the pot, and muttered a hasty, inaudible spell that caused the pot to shoot across the floor away from her, hit the opposite wall, and crack in two. Morphin let out a mad cackle of laughter. <laughs> Gone, screamed, Mendy, you pointless lump! Mendy! Merope stumbled across the room, but before she had time to raise her wand, Ogden had lifted his own and said firmly, Reparo! The pot mended itself instantly. Gaunt looked for a moment as though he was going to shout at Ogden, but seemed to think better of it. Instead, he jeered at his daughter. Lucky the nice man from the ministry's here, isn't it? Perhaps he'll take you off my hands. Perhaps he does it my daddy squibs. Without looking at anybody or thanking Ogden, Merope picked up the pot and returned it, hands trembling to its shelf. She then stood quite still, her back against the wall between the filthy window and the stove, as though she wished for nothing more than to sink into the stone and vanish. Mr. Gaunt, Ogden began again, as I've said, the reason for my visit... I heard you the first time, snapped Gaunt. And so what? Morphin gave a muggle a bit of what was coming to him. What about it then? Morphin has broken wizarding law, said Ogden sternly. Morphin has broken wizarding law, Gaunt imitated Ogden's voice, making it pompous and sing-song. <clears throat> Morphin cackled again. <laughs> he taught a filthy muggle a lesson. That's illegal now, is it? Yes, said Ogden. I'm afraid it is. He pulled from an inside pocket a small scroll of parchment and unrolled it. What's that then, his sentence? said Gaunt, his voice rising angrily. It's a summons to the ministry for a hearing. Summons! Summons! Who do you think you are summoning my son anywhere? I'm head of the magical law enforcement squad, said Ogden. And you think we're scum, do you? Screamed Gaunt, advancing on Ogden now, with a dirty, yellow-nailed finger pointing at his chest. Scum who come running when the ministry tells them! Do you know who you're talking to, you filthy little mudblood? Do you? I was under the impression that I was speaking to Mr. Gaunt, said Ogden, looking wary but standing his ground. That's right, roared Gaunt. For a moment, Harry thought Gaunt was making an obscene hand gesture, but then realized that he was showing Ogden the ugly black stone ring he was wearing on his middle finger, waving it before Ogden's eyes. See this? See this? Know what it is? Know where it came from? Centuries it's been in our family. That's how far back we go. And pure blood all the way. 
Know how much I've been offered for this with the Peveril coat of arms engraved on the stone?